and welcome to Story Engine 101. I'm author Elizabeth Ann West, and we're going to get started right away with Pseudo Write's uh, really cool, really cool tool. Here we go. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new chapter or a new project up in the top left. Every single project has a Story Engine attached to it. So that's one of the the things that we were talking about a little bit before about um, you know running different parts in different story engines and things people are, are hacking it different ways the first thing i always do is rename my project if you don't rename your project you end up with a sea of untitled i can't tell this i can't warn this enough um it, it plagues the best of us story engine and this is june 9th okay so i'm going to pop into story engine and oh my gosh boxes galore right boxes everywhere you see it well all of these boxes are optional you do not have to use them story engine is designed to move left to right um, but for this purpose in this morning, just to get started, we're going to start off with like pantsing. How many people in here identify as a pantser or a discovery writer or writing into the dark? You're not somebody who likes to plot. You like to just kind of see where the story, what, 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 where the story brings you. Okay. I see one hand there. It's Nick. Any other pantsers in the house? Oh, we got some pantsers here too. Good. Awesome. Lots of people. All right. Um, it's very nice to meet you. You are very strange to me personally. <laughs> I am a plotter. I'm one of those girls that I'm like, okay, I need to know everything that happens next and everything like that, but we're going to go ahead and pants this morning. Okay. So again, if you are a pantser, you are someone who doesn't usually like outlines. Unfortunately, fortunately, the AI does not read your mind. So you do have to give it a little bit of instruction and that can be a little bit uncomfortable at first, the first time you do it, if you're used to just, I, I write into the blank page. So we're going to start off with this outline box here. And if you hover over the question mark, the question mark will always tell you the information about the box. So the outline expands everything on the left. We don't have anything there right now. Um, and it tells you kind of some best practices to use with it. It tells you exactly what it's going to generate. If I click this generate button, um, it, it'll just come up with something because there's nothing in those boxes. If you paste in an outline, you have to match this format. It has to be and I'll show you how you do this. You type in act one. It's required to say act one. You have to have a dash. You can have whatever word you want. Yesterday I was playing with um, some people who are learning how to teach these classes as well. And we did walla walla bing bang right here. So we can do a different nonsense word. Let's do panther because why not? So we can call it whatever we want right there. Um, it does probably work better if you, for organizational purposes, if you're using words like introduction or opening or prologue or something like that. But we're playing this morning. And then you have to have a chapter one. These are the requirements. And then if I try to click generate the beats, wah, 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 I get a error message here. We didn't detect a corresponding entry in the outline. And it'll say, please add one or check the formatting of your existing outline entry. What they mean here is that there's no, there's nothing here inside of chapter one. So let's, uh, let's put something in there. Uh, one of my pantsers, what, what sometimes comes to your mind when you're going to write? Like, what are some of the abstract ideas or anything like that that you have? Any any ideas of what we want to write this morning? Okay, so Panther Cub behind a restaurant. Is that right, Nick? Yeah. Okay. Who who finds the Panther Cub? Teddy. Teddy. Terry found Terry found the uh, the Panther Club. Panther Cub, not the club. That's a whole nother different story if you find the Panther Club. <laughs> I found the Panther Club uh, behind, a behind a restaurant. All right. So here we go. Terry finds the scene strangely inspirational. There we go. Okay, so we have, we have this information and I, I really have hardly anything here. I have no characterization. I don't even know what kind of restaurant it is. And now I'm just gonna click generate. This is the bare minimum you could have to make this start to go. All right, so here we go. So it decided the AI made some decisions because we didn't give it information. The only information that the AI had was that Terry is finding a panther cub behind a restaurant. So it, it made some decisions about characterization because we did not give it any. So it decided that Terry is an animal lover who works at a wildlife rehabilitation center and hears a faint mewling sound behind a restaurant. So it's picked a setting, it's picked some characterization about Terry and it added more to the situation. Um, how, how helpful is that for those of you who struggle with coming up with ideas? Good. And what I love about this is sometimes I need to see these ideas to be like, I don't like that. 
Like I have to see what I don't like in order to come up with what I do like. Um, so Terry cautiously approaches the source of the sound, a dimly lit alleyway with rusted dumpsters and tangled vines. Um, so if I just run this right now, the way it is, um, and the, when we work with AI, this is the interstitial step. Um, if you were to just ask an AI to go, Terry found a panther cub behind a restaurant to write it. How many of you would, you would get like a paragraph or so? Like if you fed that into ChatGPT, it'll just give you a paragraph. With Story Engine, it's going to do those paragraphs. Um, it's going to do what's called a stride. So it's gonna actually run these beats two at a time. And each pair of beats is going to produce about 200 to 400 words. So I know we have some short story writers here in the house. This could be a short story if um, 200 words. So this is going to write about 1,000 to 1,400 words. So if your short story is 2,000 words, you can see that you would just add more beats. So if you want to write a short story with PseudoWrite, just run one chapter and just fill in the beats of how much you want. If you click on the question mark, it'll show you right there that each beat will be 100 to 200 words. OK, so. Terry, an animal lover who works at a wildlife rehabilitation center, hears a faint mewling sound behind the restaurant. Terry cautiously approaches the source of the sound, a dimly lit alleyway with rusted dumpsters and tangled vines. So we've described the, the description. Let's go ahead and put this to most accurate, or not most accurate, my bad. Let's go fastest and let's just see, um, we'll run it. Let me answer a question here from Garland. So you had beginning, middle, and end in the beats. Yes, your beats right here should be the sequence of the story that you want to write down at the bottom. So Story Engine allows you to basically multi-prompt the AI. So if you've ever used other AI tools like ChatGPT or something like that, you know that you feed a prompt, you get a few hundred words. You feed a prompt, you get a few hundred words. Think about these beats as individual prompts. I wanted to write this and then this. I wanted to write this and then this. I wanted to write this and then this. And you are responsible for keeping the cohesion across this, this list of instructions. The, the generate button here in um, PseudoWrite will get you started, but I find that the best beats are ones that, that we bring in together. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just gonna run fastest. I'm gonna click generate. It's gonna run one and two, and I'm gonna immediately click pause. So we just run those first two. And so this is just the very basics of what Story Engine can do. We gave it very basic information and it starts to write the scene. Hey there, it's okay, I'm here to help. He took a step forward and the cub let out a soft growl, but didn't move away. Terry slowly reached out and picked up the cub gently, cradling it in his arms. The fur was soft and warm, could feel the rapid heartbeat. I don't know. So the problem with fastest is that sometimes it'll bleed. If there's not enough information here, um, it'll just start going into the, the next beats and keep going with the story because it's like, okay, I handled this uh, as an animal lover. <laughs> he couldn't ignore a cry for help. Slowly, he made his way towards the source of the sound. So basically, it handled beats one and two in the first two paragraphs. And so then it just kept going with the rest of the story in the beats, even though it was only writing one and two. If I was to click continue, it's going to write three, four. And this is where looping comes in. So now he's in his car and he's got the car in the back seat. Let's look at three and four. You'll notice that parts three and four doesn't talk anything about a car. Actually, there's no part anywhere in here that it says about a car. And this is what happens when there was, the beats weren't strong enough. There wasn't enough meat to them. And so as a result, the AI just did the best it could, and, but it completely went off the rails from what I asked it to do. Um, so let me see some of these things here. If I have five chapters written a story already, can I give the entire written into the first five chapter sections? No, you would just start with six in the beats and you would just control it you would just manually control it. It can't read the other previous five chapters. It doesn't read the previous chapters. Um, if you have several scenes already written, can you just go put it in the chapter you're working on and add the next chapter you need to write? Yes, that's kind of what, what we, we, you can do to keep going with it. You be the orchestra conductor. You're the ones who control this. So let's pretend this is actually a scene in the middle of a story. Um, I'm gonna, up here where it says chapter one, I'm gonna create another chapter. You can run the same chapter multiple times. And in PseudoWrite, you are never penalized for what you copy and paste in. So all I did was click the copy button on the beats. I brought those same beats over. So now we're gonna make some changes to the beats and see what difference it makes when you beef up the beats. 
So Terry, an animal lover, works at a re rehabilitation center. Here's a faint mewing sound behind a restaurant. Um, let's go ahead and say, Terry is being berated by his supervisor, Jamie, for being late back from break. Oh no, that that, that would it make sense because that would mean like he found the panther. Uh, for what what do we say? For being slow in his duties around the wild the wildlife rehabilitation center. Terry and Jamie talk about the upcoming inspection. Now I'm making this up guys. I'm just coming up with it off the cuff, but I'm inspired by it based on like what it already was in there in there. And I'm trying to create, basically I saw the first scene and I was like, okay, that's like really anemic. Let's go ahead and add to it. So we need some characters. We need some conflict. We need some arguing. What kind of conflict is best at work? I know a bad boss, right? Like that's the easiest thing to grab. If we didn't want to do a bad boss, we could do, maybe there's a coworker he has a crush on if we're doing something that's romantic or something. Maybe uh, there's a kid that's lost. Well, that kind of conflates with the panther there. So maybe not that one, but maybe a person's talking to him and it turns out he's an expert on bald eagles. Your sky's the limit in what you can put in here. Um, talk about the upcoming inspection. Uh, from the benefactor. <clears throat> so every uh, job is important. The boss, the supervisor leaves and Terry hears, and I'm not gonna put that he's an animal lover because we don't need that. So that's how I changed it. And now I want to beef this up too. Uh, and you can actually put commands in here. The restaurant that is a uh, cafe and closed for the season. Make sure there's like tables and chairs um, stored there too. So when I put in brackets there, it's it's commands, it's more specific commands to the AI. By putting it in brackets, it's making sure that it helps to uh, emphasize that it's separate from the story. Um, it's separate from the plot events. So even here, I can say, write a lengthy conversation and dialogue between Terry and Jamie. So I'm giving it an instruction of how to write. How many of you have been doing this kind? I know some of our, our veterans here, they've been doing this. So if you just compare these two beats, the original ones here, I have two right here and I have these. Look at the difference. This is just one sentence. And here I have multiple sentences plus instructions and, and brackets. Now, the question was, can you just do this? Uh, yes, parentheses will work similarly to brackets. It's just some any kind of punctuation to kind of denote that this is a separate entity from the rest of it is what the AI understands. Good question. Um, there was another question up here. Can you put the commands in the chapter summary? Not really. If I was to put these commands here in chapter one and then generate the beats, it's not necessarily going to pick those up as the beats. It would it would start to translate them into beats. So we can, I can, I can show that demo in just a second. So now we have these beefed up beats. Let's keep our model the fastest so that we're comparing apples to apples. And let's see what we get this time around instead of the last time, because we compare them and I'll press pause. Now 3.5 right now, or I'm sorry, fastest right now is 3.5. You're probably wondering, Elizabeth, why are you using fastest since it's the lower model? I like fastest sometimes for checking my beats and just making sure that they make logical sense. It's also some people really like to um, they really like to have the AI write like a rough draft, but they like to rewrite everything because that's where they, that's how they feel comfortable. Or maybe that's in their contract if they're a ghost writer or something like that. So a lot of people will use fastest just to get the story started because they find it's easier to, to, to rewrite this. Um, how many of you are 
you're faster if you have words to edit versus words that you have to write. Like for me, I'm faster at editing than I am writing. Okay. Does each beat come from a specific previous card like brainstorm? No, the beats, you do the beats. The beat, this entire section of pseudo write is completely isolated from the other section of pseudo write. So the only way that it's getting these beats is you putting them in or the information that is in. If you go, if you go here, it's going to generate your beats based on what's in brain dump, genre, style, synopsis, characters, and outline. Yeah. So what I meant though is is each individual beat from one of those specific boxes, or will a beat kind of be, be no. made up of content that's in multiple boxes? It's doing the other one. It's going to read those other boxes and then it's going to come up with a list of beats. So they it's, it's it's a combination of the contents of the other boxes. Yeah, Each it's more like it's, the mega prompt on the back end basically says, read these boxes. Now, yeah. write a list of 12 beats to write this scene using the information okay. above. So it really yeah. has freedom to use the information above any way it wants to, which is why we say you, you got to watch to make sure you don't contradict yourself. You can't in yeah. brain dump say she's 30 years old, but then in character say she's 42 because it's it, you can't control which one it's going to pick up. Yeah, I mean, I struggle sometimes because it's um, it doesn't it, quite often it doesn't seem to pick up certain pieces of information that yeah. I think are key from yeah. the various boxes, and I think, well, why is it missing it? What have I done? Do it? Should it have been rather than brain dump? Should I have made more emphasis of it in synopsis? Should I have put it in the characters, or should I have put it in the chapters? You know, and where the should, answer, yeah, the answer is you should put it in the beats. But just go straight to the beats, which is what I'm yes. doing. So I spend more time just editing the beats than I yes. worry about what was in the starting points. So if it can give me a reasonable starting point for the beats, then I go and edit them in rather than try and regenerate. So yeah, it's um, that is the best practice. Basically, we're all okay. going to turn into writers who learn how to write beats really, really well to make the AI do our bidding. That's what the future then, is. Okay, good, good. Mm -hmm. So here's a question. You can summarize the previous chapters and put it into synopsis. Did she answer you? That's a good question. Which which question? Does Story Engine know the previous the reference the previous chapters? No, it does not. The only way it knows about previous information about previous chapters is what you put in outline, what you put in characters, what you put in synopsis, and what you put in brain dump. So those are your opportunities to help communicate what happens in the previous chapters. However, it's not a human. So just like I was talking with John, it, it sometimes ignores information that you're like, I say very clearly she gets a pet snake in chapter two. It says right here in the outline, she gets a pet snake. And now we're in chapter six and it said she has a pet hamster. What the heck? Yeah. Because in your beats, you just say that she, she touches her pet. And so if it didn't pick up that information that the pet is a snake from chapter two, it thought it had to invent a pet. So the solution to that is in your beats. You say she touches her pet snake or you name the snake that it matches a character in the character list. She touches, she touches her pet, Sophia, which is the snake. Does that make sense? Yep. When you put you, on the pros, there's a question mark box mm -hmm. or on the beats, either one. Um, so it says where it pulls from and yep. it lists, is that like, does it go first? From the brain dump, then yeah. the genre, then the style. So the it goes last... all at once. It goes all at once. Okay, I didn't know if that indicated emphasis. No, and it, that's like you put more emphasis the, on the outline. That's part of the reason why there's so many problems with us going. Like I said, it's a snake in chapter two, and that's in the outline. All of that information is equal weight to the AI. Okay. That's an area of AI-ness that we're still trying to solve as an industry. There's not really a, 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 a tool out there quite yet that you can go, here's my story Bible. Now write for me the, the pros and everything. People are making advances in that area every single day, but it's not the smoke, the, it's not quite there yet. Um, we're working on different things like vector searching and everything like that, but the technology is not quite there to get the AI to think at the same level a human does for synthesizing large pieces of information and knowing what's important and what's not. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Go ahead, John. Um, I noticed in one of the previous classes, somebody demonstrated using square brackets around a phrase to put emphasis. I just wondered if they're talking about using two square brackets, even more emphasis. So can you use that to control, to dictate that something must go into the uh, beats? 
Would you that can, work? but there's there's no reason for it because listen, okay. guys. Type it in beats. <laughs> yeah, just put it in the beats. <laughs> if if you're going back to your previous boxes and like, okay, I'm running the beats for chapter two. Let me go through all these boxes and like capitalize everything that has to be in chapter two. Just stick it in the chapter two beats. You yeah, don't yeah. have like if you if you just put the pertinent information in the beats, it's definitely going to use it. Yeah, it's just don't always remember what's in brainstorm or this or the synopsis it's generated. So because the synopsis is generally the first one, isn't something you write is it and something it generates so no you can the, bring your own synopsis in yeah you can but i mean quite often that's not what you do is it you you dump stuff into the brain dump and then you let it generate the synopsis so i find i've got to go and read them to see what what's yeah. what it's missed <laughs> so uh mm -hmm. go ahead man on that's because uh, ryan in one of his class he told us to use a bracket and if we even two or three brackets he, he says to the ai pay really good attention to this Yes, sometimes, but we still don't really know for sure if the AI actually paid more attention to that. And you can also still end up in a mess of yourself where some is one bracket, some is two brackets, some is three brackets, and there's no guarantee that the AI is going to go, oh, the three bracketed is more important than the one bracket. Okay. Yeah. And by the way, the whole bracketing thing, like, I was one of the first people to share that in the Slack. Like, Brackets and punctuation and stuff, the AI does understand it. It does understand it as like, this is more important. It understands all caps too. You can shout at it. And that definitely, you guys have seen me do that. Um, but all of that is, it's it's still a little squishy in the sense that it's not, it's not fully scientific like we've done. We've been able to do a bunch of testing and stuff like that. And we don't know everything that the AI thinks when it does it. The AI at the end of the day, every single time you click the button, it's a roll of the dice. So there's been times that I've yelled at it and it still didn't listen to my yelling. So <laughs> it still just did what it wanted to do. So, and that's just the nature of the AI that it's a junior writing partner. It has the ability to kind of just disregard and do what it wants to do. All right, is it a good practice to delete the brain dump once you have your outline if the story has changed too much? Yes, that's why I'm showing this so that you guys can see that these boxes are 100% optional. And if you want to really learn how to use story engine, sometimes it's easiest if you just start here and you get good at this. If you get good at the beats, the character box, truth be told, these boxes aren't necessarily going to make story engine run better. They were created for people who need help making their characters, making their outline, making their synopsis. If you are someone who already has a clear idea of what your story is and everything like that, you don't ever need to click generate. You can just bring that information into here. Does that make sense to everyone? So these boxes aren't designed to, to make, because Story Engine actually I think find works best with the least amount of information, believe it or not. I get the best material. I mean, even this, I'm not getting a lot of bleeding from other things. It's not bringing in, in characters that I don't want in this scene. Um, and it's because I very clearly defined what I want for the scene to be. Okay, so we, we changed these beats a little bit and that was fastest. Now let's go ahead and create another chapter and I'm gonna copy these beats over again. And I wanna show you the other two models that we have available. So we also have most accurate and I'm gonna click go. Sorry. You wanna hit pause? Oh, thank you very much. I always click, want to click pause. When you click pause, it'll finish to the end of the beat. Now, I already notice, and see if you guys agree here. I don't know if you guys can see. Uh, can't quite see everything here. Let me zoom out one. There we go. So you can see the two side by side. So fastest, which is right now 3.5, Terry's heart sank as he listened to Jamie's berating. Okay, that's not bad writing, but it's it's very basic writing. That, uh, most accurate started off with seriously, Terry. Jamie's voice boomed throughout the entire throughout the wildlife rehabilitation center as he approached the young man. You've been here for months now and still can't keep up with your duties. Which writing do you all prefer, left or right? Oh, Dieter, you like the left one. The Terry's heart sank. Oh, okay, you meant right. <laughs> and it looks like it. Continue. I don't know what happened here. Oh, I think it it timed out. Yeah, so it just picked it right back up again. Uh, you can't quite yet set it to pause after each stride, but that is something that uh, people have requested, and you can also in the Slack request it uh, okay. for people. 
This is doing all kinds of strange things at this point now. Number two, okay, so it picked that up. And it did, so it took what I put in the uh, brackets about the cafe closed for the season, it's tables and chairs. If I come over to this side, tables and chairs are stored haphazardly along the walls. That's all it says. But here it's got draped with tattered tarps that flapped in the breeze. Most accurate has a tendency to bring those, those details in for you. And we'll let this finish. And it probably will end up writing a few more words as well. It has a, most accurate has a tendency to also be the, the most verbose. And it looks like it's having some issues right now. How can we ask the story engine to create a scene that makes sense? And I mean that by like between beats to say, she looks at the sun falling into the ocean. That's a great night, so she goes back to writing. Uh, Manon, it seems like your beats are what's giving you the problems. Like we just need to beef up your beats. I gotta try that again. Yeah. Because um, it's really hard when you get from between chapters and it says, wait a sec. She was writing in the book and then now she's in the bar. <laughs> it doesn't, yeah, it, it's not able to do that. You have to manually fix those things. It's going to go off the rails that way. And okay. it depends on what's in the summary. If the summary of the outline, uh, for example, if my, where I have here that Terry found a Panther club behind, behind the restaurant, if I then put in here, um, at home, he watches television, <laughs> you know, like if I change the setting, in my chapter one, it's mm -hmm. going to do that. It's going to reflect that in the beats. Okay. So basically we have to tell him when we look at the beats to, to make the liaison between the scene ourselves so he can do it in the chapters. Yes, you have to control the beats so that it makes sense. And if it starts to do something that should be a second chapter, then you would want to put that into the next chapter. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So the next one I'm going to show you is best prose. Best prose is currently Claude. Um, and I say currently because, like I say, as new models come out, these different, what the button is actually attached to down the road may be a different model entirely. But right now it's Claude. And for those of you who have never heard about Claude, Claude is, uh, he's an acquired taste. A lot of people love Claude. A lot of people hate Claude. Claude is by Anthropic. And I think he's the better writer. Uh, but you'll see right here. Um, so on uh i messed up here so you also want to go ahead and label because as soon as you change the models it's going to change it for everyone and you won't remember what model was which one uh so right here in most accurate on the left it says seriously terry jamie's voice voice booms through the wildlife rehabilitation center you've been here for months and still can't keep up with your duties it starts in media res, which is Latin for in the middle of things. And it's a literary term, meaning you start the scene like in the middle of the action, in the middle of stuff happening. We have the exact same thing happen here with best prose, but it's not quite as on the nose. Jamie stormed over to Terry, who was slowly cleaning out one of the enclosures. Honestly, do you not understand the importance of this inspection? If we don't get funding from this benefactor, this whole center is done for. Can you see how best prose took it to that next level that a human would probably talk about for the inspection information? Whereas most accurate was like, and the benefactor has come. It, it's very like exactly what's in the beats. Now, um, are the beats always sequential events? Yes. I mean, unless you're writing, you want your writing to be disjumbled, then your, your beats should be sequential. The beats should reflect the sequence of events you want to have happen in the scene. Does that make sense, John? Yes. Okay. I wasn't sure if you wanted to unmute. Uh, Terry sighed, well, leaning on his break. I realized I hadn't unmuted. I hadn't unmuted. Sorry, I was trying to reply to you and I hadn't unmuted. Um, no, what I was trying to say is that I, I mentioned that I use separate projects per chapter. And what I tend to do is if I write chapter one, when I come to write chapter two, I take the last two beats from chapter one and put them in as the first two beats of chapter two. So it can do that transition between chapters. It can sort of give yeah, you- Yeah, absolutely. You can hack it to do that. 
the region. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it seems to work. So. Yeah. But, yeah, you have to be careful about which beach you choose, but the last two are usually useful. And it uh, makes it flow a bit better between the chapters. Yeah, you're making it smooth between the two. Absolutely. Yes, that helps map on. But you don't have to do that inside of a new, you don't have to do that inside of a new project. Yeah, well, I've seen it does. It seems to go a mock if I do it any other way. You like it? Okay, that's fine. That's fair. That's you exactly like it to do it that way? way. I don't know. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. But I was trying to answer your question because your question wasn't about that. Your question was just, are the beats always sequential events? And that's why I was like, yes. Well, that's like, what I about if I copy the last two, are they always going to be the last events that happened in the previous chapter? That's not what that's not so necessarily. So that's the thing. No. Like in yeah. your projects, they are, but someone yeah. else who writes, the next chapter may be a flashback chapter. So it doesn't make it's sense true. to it's, copy yeah, and yeah. paste yeah. the last yeah. two beats. Yeah. Mine has time travel in it. So it does, doesn't help always either. So. Exactly. So, okay. So, and this is best pros. Um, but I think, and I, I like both most accurate and best pros, and I often kit bash them together, meaning I just take pieces of this and put them together and then add my own words and everything like that. So that's how I work on it. Okay. Any questions about the beats or anything like that before I start a new project and I show how the other boxes work? Elizabeth, just real quick. Does it make sense that Claude looks at, uh, writing the word intensity? It gives more intensity to the, uh, Accurate gives exactly what you, more exactly what you want, but Claude is willing to make it a more intense scene. Does that make sense? It's not always intense, though. It depends on what the beats are. I mean, Claude okay. can also write a very fluffy romance piece on a first date. I've had Claude do that. Best pros. I've had best pros do that. So I think I think the problem with writing with Story Engine is all of us have our own unique writing styles. So somebody might write more intense or see this or see that because there's very subjective um emotions that go into writing so it's it's all about best prose it's going to take whatever the instructions are that are in that beatbox and it's going to probably make it most like a fiction writer but that also means that it can go off the rails and go like i don't want to write that i want to write this most accurate is going to be very clinical in how it interprets those beats that's actually more helpful for some authors because they're like i just need it to follow exactly what i want and then i'll go change it um there's another question in the chat. Does it matter how many beats you add? Can you write a very long chapter with 100 beats? No. Uh, you are locked into 2,000 words in your beat box. So if your 100 beats are, I don't know, 20 words, 20 words long, then yes. But um, I, I would, you wouldn't want to write 100 beats. Uh, most I would probably run is, is maybe, maybe 15 to 20. And remember, beats are always going to run two at a time in a stride. So that's going to be the chunk and then the next chunk. And that's another advanced topic here too, is about smoothing between these. And some people uh, have tactics and things like that for that as well. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of this and start a new chapter. And we're going to talk about those other boxes. So we're going to go new, a new bot, a new chapter or new project. And I'm going to put can delete. So I know I can delete it bigger. So we've talked about those right box, those right hand boxes. So you understand where that's going. The left hand boxes is what influences the right hand box. Um, and uh, so your brain dump, that's the, if you hover over the question mark, it's going to tell you exactly what each box needs and what it influences. These boxes are 100% optional. If you already know stuff about your story, you don't wanna put it into brain dump. You should probably start with synopsis. Like if you already have an outline, if you already have, stuff written, you probably just want to go straight to outline, right? You don't necessarily need to use brain dump and synopsis and everything. These boxes, oops, these boxes are designed to help you if you don't have any idea about what to do for your story. All right, so we were talking about Terry and the cub. So I'm going to put uh, wild life uh, refuge center, reality TV show simulator, and the genre is going to be contemporary fiction. Um, we won't worry about the style box right now because it doesn't actually influence synopsis. And I'm going to put whole cast of characters and animals uh, kind of like The Office in that it's a mock humentary <laughs> show in a book format with um, with hijinks 
and crazy antics. Uh, the big conflict is securing funding for another year from an eccentric billionaire. And that's all I know about the story. Like I, I just was making stuff up that would work with what we were working with before. And I clicked generate on synopsis. And so now it's just taking that brain dump and it's coming up with different characters. So we have a down to earth, uh, <laughs> majestic tigers to playful monkeys and the show's crew captures their daily lives and antics for audiences around the world. At the center of it all is the main character, a down to earth animal caretaker named Sarah. She has a deep love for all the animals under her care, takes pride in her work. The inciting incident occurs when Sarah receives word that the center's funding is in jeopardy. An eccentric billionaire who's been supporting them for years is now considering pulling his support. Um, she's got to do that. Tensions rise. Uh, she hatches a plan to create a new show concept that will appeal to the billionaire's interest. She pitches it to him and agrees for another one. This isn't exactly what I wanted, but uh, I would change this, like rewrite this to make it more about uh, episodes. where there is a problem each one and the overall arc is about the benefactor add more character names and if i click rewrite it's going to follow those instructions i tell people don't be a t-rex if you are just making a couple of changes to your synopsis just do it by hand if you want a complete rewrite it's going to charge you the words again. So it was already 475 words. So this charged another 424 words for my quota. So let's see if we have Sarah. Uh, there we go, an escaped monkey, an injured tiger. They're constantly facing new problems. She takes on the daunting task as each step of the progresses becomes inventive and risky. And so we don't have the character names in here, but it will generate some characters here. Um, and it's, it's programmed to do six characters. Obviously your story may have more than six. So this is where you would just add more characters. The key punctuation here is the colon. Any word with a colon after it, it's going to assume it is a character or some kind of entity for the story. So there are people who have put settings in here or um, like magical objects and things like that. I know the box says characters, but as far as the AI is concerned, it's not, it's not exactly a character. It could also just be information about the story. So we have Jasper, we have Maxine, we have Evan. I don't know that Terry is going to make the cut because we don't have Terry anywhere in here. And this is just what the AI is suggesting. These are just suggestions. 100% you should, you should uh, be, you could, should add information in there. Uh, so yes, that is what I was just saying. Characters can be places or locations, especially if it's yeah. pertinent to that that chapter that you're writing, and you know that you're going to call it out in beats of like, like let's say the cafe is uh, mo called Moonlight Sonata, Moonlight Sonata Cafe. If you want information about Moonlight Sonata Cafe to be known, you just put that in the character box, and it'll pull that in when it's doing the prose and when it's writing the beats. Does that make sense? Yep, perfect. Yep, yeah, it's good. And I would want to make changes to these characters. People have put Enneagrams in here, uh, Myers-Briggs. You can put all kinds of information about the character. The question is, can character have backstory in there? Yes. And at the same time, I don't recommend it necessarily. And here's why. If you put backstory in here, there's a chance that the AI will try to tell that backstory in your main beats. So I would only put backstory information in here as it pertains to the chapter that you're trying to run. If you just add a bunch of backstory in here, um, sometimes that, like I say, story engine runs best on the least amount of information it needs to write that chapter. If it has extra information about the chapter, you can't always control how it's going to, to take that into consideration. Does that make sense, Hillary? Okay, cool. Go ahead, Ed. Um, do you think it would help at all if you put backstory in brackets that it would take it as a backstory? No, because it doesn't, it doesn't understand that brackets means backstory. It just knows that brackets mean that's something that's different from what else. No, I mean, put the word backstory in brackets. You can, but again, you can't. So if the AI knows something, 
it has the opportunity to use it <laughs> in a way you don't necessarily want it to. I got you. So um, that's the only thing that is like the caveat that I have on that. You can absolutely put backstory in there. There's always the chance that it's going to talk about her back. Like, let's say you have the backstory of her parents were in a car accident when she was a kid. It will make sure to put it in every single chapter about Sarah that, you know, ever since her parents died in a car accident, <laughs> she's been on her own. It thinks it has to put those characterizations in it. Because when it writes these chapters, everyone, it doesn't know that it's written 10 other chapters. It doesn't know that there's 10 other chapters. It only knows this chapter is like it's it's one shot. It's one shot to do all the all the writing with the information you give it. So it, it tries to over overdo it. Can you talk about how things on the left hand side feed things on the right hand side? Um, so Garland, if you if you click on any question mark, you'll see right here. Uh, this section is generated based on synopsis, which means the information in synopsis is what in, is what was fed into the characters for it to make this list of characters. So you'll notice all these characters that it came up with, like animal behaviorist. It came up with that because we said we said we're at a wildlife refuge center. It wouldn't have just brought in an animal behaviorist if we were writing a mafia romance and we didn't have anything mentioned about animals. Um, so outline's going to look at genre, synopsis, and characters, and we'll go ahead and click generate. Will characters ever be tick boxes? Uh, probably not. Uh, I don't know. They're, they're talking about different things, but I mean, if I'm honestly truthful about this, it's the problem with tick boxes is speed. Like, it sounds like that's something that we want until you realize it's so much faster if you just have character lists that you paste in yeah. um, for each chapter and you're like, oh gosh, because it gets tedious. If you're, if you're running chapters, you're like, I've got to do the tick boxes. There's 20 characters in here and I've got to untick all of these or I've got to tick them or things like that. So um, what I actually do, and this is a very advanced tactic, uh, I use other AI tools like ChatGPT to look at my outline and my character list, and I make it run my character list based on the, like I say, read this outline, modify this character list for chap to write chapter six. And so it modifies the character list. So I have a character list for chapter six, modify this character list for chapter seven, modify this character list, add in minor characters for chapter eight. So I, I do those kinds of tasks with AI. Um, and that way I just copy and paste my character list in here. So like you, John, where you're doing a separate project, I'm all in one project and I'm just making changes to my boxes. Yeah, I'm just trying to keep the tool set down to a minimum. So I'm just focusing mm -hmm. on the story engine, even so, so far as not to use certain components in pseudo right that would make life a bit easier as well. So I'm just focusing on story engine at the moment. When I get a bit more competence with it i might start um adding other tools and things but um i don't want to end up with like a dozen tools to write the book because i'm, I'm yeah. using other tools to publish it as well so i'm using yeah. flip books and you know the technology to um to take the raw data into a book so yeah. um, i end up with so many places where data is stored i'm losing track so it uh, gets messy Welcome. i think I've Welcome to the club. Before yeah, before computer software, we had them all on sticky notes and notebooks for notebooks. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, Ian, theoretical question. Let's see here. Do you think we will get to the point in the not so distant future when you can tell pseudo right that the whole story needs to unfold over 60 chapters? Yes and no. <laughs> uh, this goes back to human reasoning. So here's the here's the yes answer on that. Claude 100 k which I've played with can already read up to 100,000 tokens, which equates to 65,000 words. So you can feed it 65,000 words and ask it what happens next in the story and it'll just go. However, it's rubbish at actually being very nuanced. So if you think about it, think about, think about a human that could read 65,000 words in five minutes. How, how deep would their understanding of those words be? not very deep, right? Like they just, okay, I read it. <laughs> and so it doesn't necessarily make those advanced connections and stuff. And you can also see that in the writing here. Like the AI is great. Sarah, a compassionate and resourceful animal caretaker works at the Wildlife Refuge Center. Her normal life consists of caring for the animals, managing the center staff and ensuring the well-being of the creatures under her care. That's really cool. That's not a first chapter. That is not a chapter one anyone wants to read. 
Who wants to read Sarah waking up in the morning and brushing her teeth and getting ready to go for work at the Wildlife Resource Center? That's the right. No <laughs> That's, <job. laughs> exactly. So, so if I'm going to to look at this, the very first thing that I do is I change chapter one because the outline, and I'm I'm working on prompting to beef up these outlines so that we have actually have outline uh, templates and stuff that we can use. But right now, it's it's uh, it defaults to just doing twelve chapters. And then um, down here at the bottom, so you'll see that your drop down here, it's 12 chapters, right? Act four, 12 chapters. If I need a chapter 13, all I have to do is write in chapter 13 and a colon. And now in my drop down, I actually have 13 chapters. So what this means is, is that you can bring an outline in that's any length uh, up to the 1700 words. It just has to be in this format where you have act one hyphen um, or dash, some word here in a colon. And then you just have to have chapter, the number and the colon. And you can have 30 chapters, you can have 40 chapters, you can have whatever chapters you need, as long as it fits within 1700 words. And so some people have been doing like the earlier chapters because they're writing a much longer piece, a piece of information, but they want the AI to know what happened. They summarize the first chapters into like one sentence snippets. So it knows what happened chapters one through 10, but we're working on 11 through 15. So those are beefier chunks of information to, to feed into the beats. And the other stuff in the outline is just like to tell the AI what's happened in the story so far. Um, so in the near future, I think it's gonna be a number of years before it can do something cohesive and it's still not gonna be as good as if a human could do that next level. Does that make sense, Ian? Yeah, absolutely, thank you. Yeah. All right, so if you know the beginning and the ending, will doing the brain dump characters and the other boxes to the right generate the middle chapters? Yes, it can. Uh, more specifically, uh, if you have a beginning and an ending and you can throw it in a brain dump, you may have to click synopsis a couple of times because it may not, it may decide to, to it, 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 synopsis has the ability to go, I don't like your ending and I'm gonna substitute my own, or I don't like your beginning, I'm gonna substitute my own. But you could put like beginning and middle or beginning and end and say, I don't know the middle here. And actually put that in brain dump. I don't know the middle of the story. When you click synopsis, it'll follow that as like a prompt and it'll actually write you the middle of the story for you. And then from that, from that synopsis, once you decide on the synopsis, you can use that to inform the characters and the outline. Absolutely. That's what I did last night. And the synopsis worked out really well. So I, I feel like I have, you know, with the brain dump and the synopsis, I think I have the, the basic skeleton mm -hmm. of what I want. I was just wondering if I have to put in, like you were just saying, a, wor uh, a short summary of the first two or three chapters, yep. and then let it fill in the rest. Am I on the right? You are on the right path. You can't put like two chapters here and click generate and it continue down. It won't do that. It'll just rewrite it. But you can, from the brain dump, start getting that information left to right. Um, there is no pseudo right. So 65,000 words, that's an experimental model that's um, out on Claude. There's uh, places to access it, but it's not, it's not in pseudo right. Pseudo right makes calls to it, but uh, pseudo right doesn't, we don't have, pseudo right doesn't have the ability to just, for you just to prompt that particular model. Um, if you get good at this, does pseudo right get to know your writing so prose will be in your voice? No, it does not. It's not learning. It's not, it's not interpreting. It's not storing your stuff to, to, to learn from it or anything like that. Um, you basically have to get it to do your, your voice and everything like that each time and tweak it. Yeah. Yeah. I was just mentioning about that, about Claude 100K. I've played with it in the, um, in the Anthropic. I have access to the Anthropic console, which is uh, like access to the API. Uh, cause I work as a prompt engineer. So I also have access to the big, the big dangerous tools. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, so real fast, what we didn't really talk about is style, the style box. And I did want to talk about that so that we can, we're going to go back to our other project. So any questions about the, the outline and that you would want to change the outline, you can bring your own outline in. It just has to be in this format and you can add chapters at the end if you want more drop downs. Okay. Instead of, this is where we would click generate the beats, but I'm not gonna do that right here because, well, I mean, all it would do is generate the beats for Sarah now. So it would just create the beats. Now the beats are going to be looking at brain dump, genre, style, synopsis, characters, and the outline and come up with the beats for that first chapter. Um, 
And truthfully, I like, I'm like Don um, Elfin. I don't, I don't always like the AI to write my beats for me. I actually usually write my own beats. <laughs> I usually, I have my own outline and I, I, I like to tweak my own beats or they, they, they give me the beats and I, I do a lot of heavy edits to them. Um, and so here we go. So this is uh, Manon. I think when we were talking a little bit earlier, if it keeps saying like introduce Sarah as a 32 year old animal caretaker, there's nowhere that it says she's 32. So that's what it decided here. If I create another chapter one and I click generate, And we'll let that run. It's going to come up with a completely different. It doesn't. This silo, and that's why I call it a silo. This chapter one doesn't know this chapter one exists. It has no idea of the information that's in here. Once that, you that's the problem. Huh? That's where the problem is because it doesn't see the chapter you already written. No, it does not. It cannot. That's that's way too big of a context window for the AI to handle. See yeah, right that's... here, it made her twenty-eight. Yeah, exactly. So that's the problem that you're running into. They don't talk to one another. So um, basically there should be like a line here, like a dashed line. Mm -hmm. This, the left box, the right boxes understand the left boxes up to a certain point. But once you're in here, you'll see, even if I click on it, it says it looks at brain dump, genre, style, synopsis, characters, outline. It doesn't look at other chapters. It doesn't look at other chapter boxes. That, that's the only way to get the AI to look at the previous chapter that that he will not make those mistakes or those it new it, facts. AI can't do that yet. Yeah. AI only works in in snippets of like two thousand to five thousand words, so there's no way for it to look at the previous um, at the previous chapters. Okay, that, we, we can pray though that they're going to fix that. <laughs> well, we can, but then that's like hastening us going out of a job. So I don't know. <laughs> it's uh, two, two side of a coin, huh? <laughs> uh, consolidating two boxes of pros, you would just do that manually, John. Yeah, there's no automated way. I just wondered, you know, if you- could... I mean, there is, because I invented a prompt for it. There's a YouTube video I shared in the Slack community. I call it kit bashing, but it's not inside a pseudo write. Okay. Yeah. So where's that, where that cut? It's, it's still, it's, it's experimental. Um, okay. So that's why it doesn't have a feature yet. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, well, it'd be nice to have. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, one could take precedence over the other. I mean, sometimes you see really good things that are in best pros versus fastest or versus the- Yeah, um, I'll show you. I'll show you at the end some experimental work I've been working on. Okay. Okay. All right. So the last thing I need to cover to respect y'all's time, because I know that we're over here on time. Let's go back to our other story engine that we did, story engine June 9th, and let's talk about that style box because I know some people had some questions about the style box. So if we come over here, we gave it no information about the style and I think we're gonna influence the best pros. Uh, that's the one, because it runs fastest and it runs decently. And we'll say that this is some pretty pretty good stuff. Um, what kinds, let, let's, let's pick some very drastic changes that we want to this particular uh, chapter outline here. What would be a very drastic difference from what it currently writes in the default position? Do you, yeah, I was thinking about that, making it like dark and ominous, maybe more threatening. So if I come over here to the style box, um, oh, we don't even say genre here. So let me go ahead and make this contemporary fantasy. Uh, and let's go with dark and ominous in tone. And I'm not gonna, and then we'll add a theme, a uh, theme of um, no escape, trapped. A dramatic climax. Well, the dramatic climax is not, that's not gonna change the tone of the writing because that's that's a plot event. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, but we can go with high tension. And um, there's not a comprehensive list that Pseudo Wright knows about. And you can actually you can actually mix two, remix two genres together and everything. No, you don't want it selectable or drop down lists, I promise you. Because if you do that, then you can't bring in genres that get invented uh, or describe new genres or anything like that. Yeah, <laughs> drop down but lists you, are bad. Well, if you allow if you allow a free format option as well, so you've got both. I mean, it's just that there's only four, 40 characters to play with in both of those. So yeah, from working with basically, 
you get one or the other in pseudo right so that's why i always advocate for <laughs> the box we can put something in you can't have it where it's yeah down, you can choose to put free on it and, and it goes it goes back to this i had to i'm sorry about my dogs i had to learn this when i was part of the pseudo right team because i'd never done software development before but i learned that software develop in software development there's a very clear discipline that you should never have both either one is better than the other but if you have to have both it kind of makes the argument that you shouldn't have one of them so for example if you have to have a freeform box because the drop down isn't going to satisfy the majority of everyone's needs then it makes the argument that there shouldn't be a drop down box does that yeah. make sense well okay but yes yeah, i know tools <laughs> but, 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 but I'll, I'll do it with a spreadsheet i'll just leave a spreadsheet with all of the various genres because yes. i saw i saw recently someone put all i mean there's probably about 50 different genres as they put in a list on the um on the community area and it, they were very good and things that i hadn't thought about before so i put them into a spreadsheet and i just pull them in that way so um i yeah. have to invent them myself every time it's just, um, i'd rather use the terminology that someone else has agreed and sort of documented so it seems to be quite useful yeah the problem is is that it'll change and different yes, course, different yes, genres yes. come out and i'm sorry about the dogs the dogs are mine i apologize we yeah, have a no, delivery that came in uh and the class right. ran over and so now my dogs are going nuts we have three yeah. rescue dogs here so i apologize it's mine that's doing most of the howling uh so dark and ominous in tone theme of no escape trapped high tension action rich um now if we do action rich it's going to like this is the trade-offs it's going to cut down it's going to cut down on the dialogue so if we want dialogue but we'll see we'll see action rich and see what happens here so what we're going to do is we're going to create another chapter one and so that we're always comparing apples to apples i'm going to use best pros because this was best pros and we're not going to change the beats because if i change the beats and i change the tone we're not going to be able to really see what the difference tone makes to it so i'm going to go ahead and generate that and then we'll press pause I feel I need another class again. Yes, this is taught every Friday at this time for the next couple of weeks. I will be teaching it. There's more classes coming too. Ryan teaches it on Thursdays, I think. And then I also teach this on Wednesday mornings as well at 8 a.m. Uh, you can sign up for more. Uh, Lou.ma slash pseudorite has all of our classes that are free for you guys to take. All right, so here we go. We have uh, Terry wiped the sweat off his brow as he hauled another crate of medical supplies into the rehabilitation center storage room. His supervisor, Jamie, leaned against the doorway with her arms crossed, scrutinizing his every move. Okay, I would say that this ratcheted up the tension a little bit between those characters. It's definitely a different tone than what we had before. Um, Hurry it up, Terry, Jamie barked. The benefactor will be here any minute for his inspection. If he sees this place in disarray again, he'll cut our funding for sure. Oh, Dasha, that's my dog. <laughs> that's my panther that's going nuts over there. She thinks that there's, I'm in danger. So she's just trying to let me know. <laughs> Terry gritted his teeth, biting back a retort. Jamie had been on his case all week, constantly berating him for every minor mistake. I'm going as fast as I can, he said. There's only so much one person can do, you know. Jamie snorted. Excuses won't help when this place gets shut down. She checked her watch and frowned. Just get the rest of the supplies in here before Mr. Collins arrives. I'm going to double check the animal enclosures. She strode off down the hall, her heels clicking on the tile floor. Oh my goodness. So that's one thing that's like the telltale of AI is heels clicking on the floor. Uh, Willow Creek is the name of a thing. You will get this particular phrase all the time in AI written material. <laughs> Very cliche. Um, so now he's hearing the, the mew of the, the panther. The mewling grew loud, louder, narrow alleyway behind the row of shops next door. The alley was dim and cluttered, littered with rusted dumpsters and piles of rotting trash. An old cafe sat at the end of the alley, closed for the season with its chairs and tables stacked haphazardly inside. And there, peeking out from beneath the pile of debris, was a pair of glowing yellow eyes. Well, that definitely is higher tension and dark and ominous, I think. It's still the same material, but it definitely changed the tone of the writing. Does that make sense? And I think the, the person who had the question about theme, theme is very abstract. I think when I gave the theme of no escape trapped, that kind of influenced the way that it decided to write about him bringing in those medical supplies. It's, it's a very nuanced change. You can't go wrong with theme. There's no wrong word to put in theme, 
So if you put work keywords in there that make sense to you as a human, that's just the lens that the AI tries to write through if it's making choices. All right. So um, that is the uh, Story Engine 101. I know that there's still a whole lot more to it. That's why we're working on some more advanced classes in Pseudowrite about Story Engine deeper dives. But we Pseudowrite is working on more advanced curriculum coming in the near future that's going to go more in depth in Story Engine. There's also author hours that individual authors volunteer their time and they show off how they use the software and everything like that. Um, and then we have a whole crop of new uh, new instructors who are coming up. So you'll be able to learn Story Engine from other authors, not just me, and how they use it and everything.